Right, let's go on now to example number two. And uh, we're going to continue with adding and subtracting radicals. But now we're going to put different index numbers in there. Higher ones. Oh, no. But we got this, y'all. We got this. Let's crack down one problem at a time here. Okay, so let's uh, look at problem letter A here. And let's see what the daily is. So we have negative 2 times the fourth root of 32 minus 7 times the fourth root of 162. Okay, so remember what we learned from last section. These, our radicals, must have the same index and the same radicand if we're going to add or subtract them. As we can see here, uh, 32 and 162 are not the same number, so we're going to have to break these down, break our radicals down, simplify them, so that they can have the same um, index and radical, and then we can combine like terms here. Okay, so we'll do uh, one little thing here at a time. Okay, so first of all, uh, let's see, the fourth root of 32. So what perfect... Or what uh, what number that that has a a perfect fourth power, okay, goes into 32. Okay, remember if you want to you know write out your fourth powers, that means so we, we always skip one because one goes into everything. So like two to the power of four, uh, three to the power of four, uh, five to the power of four. Oops, I guess I skipped four right there. Uh, four to the power of four, five to the power of four. Okay, so basically we, we, we want to know what which one of these numbers goes into 32. Okay, so 2 to the power of 4 is 16, right? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 3 to the power of 4 is 81. Uh, 3 times 3 is uh, 9 times 3 is 27 times 3 is 81. So let's see. I think we, could, we can tell that 16 divides into 32, right? Okay, so that means we can rewrite this as a product of two radicals. So... Let's just remember how this works right here. So that's negative 2 times. Now this becomes the fourth root of 16 times the fourth root of 2. 16 times 2 is 32. And remember, one of these numbers has to be a, a perfect fourth root. Okay, so whatever the index is, those are the... the, the um, the squared numbers are the third or the fourth powers that you're looking at. And in this case, we're looking at the, the fourth power. Now let's go over here. So now this is minus 7, but now we have 162. So let's see. Does uh, 16 go into 162? Well, if you just punch that in your calculator real quick or, or divide it long division, that, that won't go in. But if you try, um, if you, if you try 81, 81 is going to go into... Uh, 162. So we have a fourth power that goes into it, which is 81. So we can write this as the fourth root of 81 times the fourth root. Uh, what's that going to be right there? It's going to be a 2. Okay. So 81 times 2 is 162. Okay. And 16 times 2 is 32. Let's just, let me just, uh, uh, just reemphasize that the way that you find these two numbers is you have to look at the index and those are the powers that you're looking at so we're looking at all the fourth powers okay all the fourth powers that go into 32 and and then here we're looking at all the fourth powers that go into 162 okay and and, and you're looking for the biggest one that goes into there so that means one of these numbers always has to be a perfect square a perfect cube a perfect fourth power okay so, all right, now let's break this down then. So negative 2, uh, the fourth root of 16 is just uh, 2, right? So I, I could just say times 2, and that's then times the fourth root of 2, okay? Minus uh, this right here, minus uh, 7, the fourth root of 81, the fourth root of, of 81 is 3, so times 3, and then times that by the fourth root of 2. Clean this up right here. Negative 2 times negative 2 is negative quattro times the fourth root of 2. 7 and 3 gives us 21 times the fourth root of 2. Ah, now do you see what we got right here? We have the fourth root 
and we have the same index. I'm sorry, uh, same radicand and same index. So now we could do negative 4 minus 21. Negative 4 minus 21 uh, is going to give us a negative 25, and then we have fourth roots of 2. Hua bam! And that would be our simplified answer. Okay, let's uh, move on to question B now. Maybe I'll change to like a red color here. All right, so now we throw in some some variables with some other exponents. So let's see if we can crack down on this dude. Okay, the third root of p to the power 4 and q to the power 7 minus the third root of 64 times p times q. Okay, so let's see about this little problem here. Well, from what we learned from last section, we can break this down into two radicals, right? One as a third rad as a third power. I'm sorry, as a third root, and another as a third root. So let's rewrite this as the third roots of p to the power of four times the third roots of q to the power of seven. Okay, that's the first idea. I just broke this up as a product of two separate radicals. Okay, so now we need to break down what's the third root of p to the power of 4. And we've done problems just like this in last section. You can go back and review that if you need to. But the way that we do this, you say, okay, how many times does 3 go into 4? Well, 3 goes into 4 one time. So the way that we write that is we say, okay, well, 3, or the third root of p to the power of 3 times the third root of just p p to the power of 3 times p is p to the power of 4. And, and you see right here how, how three, 3 goes into 3 one time? Okay, and, and that's why I asked that right there. How many times is 3 going to 4? Well, it goes into it one time. So, so that's why I'm going to make this a 3 then, so that this 3 can go into that 3 one time. And then the way we simplify this, right, is we divide um, our little power right here divided by um, our index. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, so that's just p. And this right here becomes still the third root of p. Okay, so we simplified this whole guy, and it became p times the third root of p. All right, now let's simplify this guy over here. And so this guy, 3 goes into 7 two times, right? 3 goes into 7 two times, so that means I'm going to say the third root of q to the power of 6 times the third root of just q. See how 3 goes into 6 two times? Okay, and so that's why I knew to bring this down one, one term. Um, so 3 goes into 6 two times. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. So that just becomes q squared. And this right here is the third root of q. And notice this now, we have p times q squared, and then we have the third root of p and the third root of q. So since both of these have the same radical, we can put those together, and these last terms put those on the outside. So I can simplify this whole thing to finally become p q squared, and then multiply that all by the third root of p q. Okay, so all this mumbo jumbo to get just the, the left side. We just simplified the left side over here and it became pq squared times the cube root of pq. Okay. Now let's uh let's take this guy right here and let's simplify this and then we'll see if we can do any kind of combining like terms. All right. Well, uh I'm going to go ahead and break this up into into three separate radicals now. So I'm going to say the cube roots of 64 times the cube root of p times the cube root of q. Okay, so we can break it out into uh, three radicals there. Now, the cube root of 64, does does that automatically have a cube root? Like, can is 2 a cube or is 4 a cube that goes into to 64? Hmm, I don't think so. So let's say we have to try to 
pick one of our cube numbers, like 3 to the power of 3, or 2 to the power of 3, or 4 to the power of 3, or 5 to the power of 3. Which one of these cube numbers goes into uh, 64? Hmm. Let's think about this here. Which one of those uh, cube numbers is going to go into uh, 64? Well, I think. Actually, let me think about this real quick. Wait, 64, 4. Wait, 4 cube is 64. Oh, actually, yeah, like it does go into right there. Okay. All right, guys. We got this. We got this. Yes, yeah, actually, uh, the cube root of 64 is just going to give us 4. All right, so we can just write this as 4. And then, um, and then, um, notice over here, this is a p cube. This is going to be a p cube, so we can rewrite this as the third root back to a p cube. So basically, we could just keep this as one radical because they both have the same index, C3 and 3. So I could just say, oh, third root of p times the third root of q is the third root of p cube. Okay, so we simplified that side. That was a lot easier. So let's just bring this guy down. So bring down your minus sign, minus the fourth root of the third root of P Q. Okay. So now how do you add or how do you subtract this from that when these things are you know still looking different right here? And really the matter is you really even can't still, I mean, how do you add P Q squared and, and uh, Four, right can't do that so basically what, what you can do to really simplify this is you could uh, factor out see how they both have a common factor of a third root of PQ this has a third root of PQ so you could write this in one last line and say no I'm gonna factor out that third root of PQ okay and then I'm just gonna put back inside if I took out if I took if I took this out, and if I took this out, notice what we would have left. We would have this guy left, and then we would have that left. So that's what I'm going to put back inside my, my parentheses. I'm going to put PQ squared minus 4. You see, if I, if I go back and if I multiply this through, like this times that guy gives me back my first term. And this little dude times that guy is going to give me back this guy. So, so basically, these two, this answer on the left and the answer on the right are, are, are similar. They're the same answer, but the one on the right is at least factored. And uh, you may have to, to input the answer in that kind of fashion right there. So, okay, if that was enough, I have a part C for us. All right, let's go ahead and uh, try to figure out what's going on with this little dude. All right, so we have the 6 times the third root of 16z to the power of 7 plus uh, 4 times the square root of 200 times z to the power of 5. All right, let's crack down. Let's do this. First of all, let's break this down into uh, two radicals. Okay, so 6 times the third roots of 16 times the third root of z to the power of 7. Okay? So I just broke this down into a product there. All right, so we drop down the 6. That's nice. Now, the third root of 16. Let's see. If you look at our third powers, we have 3 to the power of 2, which is 9. We have um, uh, 2 to the power. Oops, I, I, I always skip 2. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So I guess this should have been like up here. Uh, oh, so that means then this should have been 27. Man, I was messing up this morning, y'all. My bad, my bad. I, actually, here, let me do it in order then. Let me try that again there. All right, so let's do that again there. Okay, so we have 2 to the power of 3, which is 8. We have uh, 3 to the power of 3, which is 27. You know, we have uh, 4 to the power of 3 which is 64, and it just keeps going here. So let's see, we're trying to break down 16, right? So which one of th these numbers goes into 16? Well, there's only one of them, right? Which is going to be 8. So I can rewrite the third root of 16 as the third root of 8 times the third root of 2, because 8 times 2 is 16. Yeah? Well, look, well, the third root of 8 
is just two. So I can rewrite this guy as two. So that's six times two times the third root of two. And finally, I can rewrite that as 12 times the third roots of two. Okay, so that was just kind of like this half of it right here, right? Now let's break down the third root of z to the power of seven. Okay, we just keep doing the same process there as we say, okay, three goes into seven two times, right? So I can rewrite that. I'll just change uh, to black here. I can change that now to the third root of z to the power of six times the third root of just z. Okay, now I know how to do that because three goes into six two times, right? I want to ask myself, how many times does three go into uh, seven? Well, two times. That's why I have to bring that to a six. Z to the power of six times Z is Z to the power of seven. So then this becomes nicely six divided by three is two. So that's Z squared. And I still have my third root of Z. Okay. And uh, let's see, this is all supposed to be multiplied, right? So if I bring this guy down, boo, times, so this is Z squared times the third root of z. Let's go ahead and combine this all together. This is all multiplied here. So I can multiply the 12 and the z squared together. So I'll have 12 z squared. And then look, this is the third root of two and the third root of z. So since they both have the same index, I could just put it all under uh, one radical. That's the third root of uh, two z, okay? So this entire left side Simplify down to 12z squared times the third root of 2z. Nice. Now let's come over here and let's simplify this guy. Okay. So let's see. This is the square root power of 2. So let's go ahead and first break this up into two radicals. So 4 times the square root of 200 times the square root of z to the power of 5. All right. This is core right here. So what? 200. What perfect square number goes into 200? Well, 100, right? So I could say 4 times 100 times 2. Oh, dang, look at this dude. So again, remember, this is a ghostly 2 right here. Arr, arr, arr. 2 goes into 5 2 times. So that's why I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of z to the power of 4 times z. 2 goes into 4 2 times. Okay? And then uh, we have a z left right here. z to the power of 4 times z is z to the power of 5. Okay, so 4 times, uh, what's it? That's going to be a, a 10 right there, right? So 4 times 10, and I still have a radical 2 right there. But then I can rewrite the square root of z to the power of 4. I just divide 4 by 2, so that becomes z to the power of 2. And I have my square root of z. So these are all being multiplied. So let's multiply the radicals together and the non-radicals. So 4 times 10 times z squared is just 40 z squared. And then here I have a radical 2 times a radical z. So that's the square root of 2z. Okay, so let's actually have our final answer now. So our final answer is this plus that. And this has a third root, you know, this only has a square root, so really you, you can't combine them. So our answer is just going to be 12z squared times the third root of 2z uh, plus 40z squared times 2z. Okay? And um, I guess supposedly you could also try to factor something out like they, well, let's see. Uh, I mean, they both have a factor of like, uh, you know, two right here, two Z squared. But this was a really hairy guy here. So we'll just leave it just as we found it, just like that there.